Welcome to part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, you'll find a link to that in the description box below. With the table frame done, I could turn my attention to making the top. So I pulled out some larger bits of beach and I didn't have any slabs wide enough to make the top in one piece. And I don't think two pieces would have looked good. So I decided to make it out of three pieces. I wanted the width of the top to be 450 millimeters. So each piece would need to be 150 millimeters wide. I needed a straight edge on all of these pieces to work from, so I decided to do that with the track saw. And this cordless Makita track saw has no issues cutting through it in just one pass, which never fails to amaze me. Then I can reference that straight edge against the fence of my table saw and get it cut to approximate width. I get each piece face planed and then I thickness plane the opposite face. Originally I was aiming for a top that would be about 25mm thick when I did my drawing but I ended up keeping it much chunkier, mainly because I liked how it looked with the frame but also because I didn't want to just waste the wood by planing it down. And then back at the table saw with the faces now trued up, I ripped the edges again to make sure they're square and at this point each piece is 150mm wide. Here I'm figuring out what grain I want visible on the top and then I can add glue, but the glue up unfortunately didn't go to plan because when I tightened the clamps, one of the pieces was causing the top to bow. I probably should have done a dry fit first before applying the glue. So anyway, what I did was I glued up just the two pieces that joined together nicely and I wiped the glue off the third piece. And then the next day I worked on squaring up that edge with my hand plane. It was only a tiny bit off, but after taking a few shavings, it joined together nicely. So I got that third piece glued up and just checked that it was flat this time and it wasn't perfect, but it'd be good enough with some sanding. Once the glue was dry, I cut the edges and here I noticed a mistake, which was that I had forgotten to alternate the grain on each slab, as you can see here. It really should have been oriented as per this diagram as that would help it remain flat as the wood moves with seasonal changes but to be honest I think it'll be fine as it'll be secured down to the frame and also I know that this wood is dry and stable already but if it does create any issues in future I can always cut along the glue joints and reassemble as necessary to fix it. I did lots of sanding and also some scraping to clean up the glue joints. I also routed a really small subtle roundover onto the edges of both the top and the frame too. This just removes the sharp edges and makes it nicer in the hands. A roundover at the bottom of the legs will also prevent grain tear out if the table gets dragged around the floor. I added my maker's mark to the bottom of the tabletop, even though no one will ever see it with the drawer in there, but never mind. And then it was on to finishing and first I wanted to try out a few different finishes on an off cut of the beach I'm using because I needed to try and match the colour of some existing furniture and a fireplace in the room where this will be. So I waited for those to dry. So here are the finishes I've tried so far. This one is boiled linseed oil. This one is the blonde shellac. This one is the darker shellac and this one is the light oak stain. These two here are probably the ones that best match my mum and dad's existing furniture and fireplace, but I'm actually gonna go with this one, the stain, because I prefer the brown tone to it, and also because beach ages and turns orangey naturally, I think after a year or so of light exposure, it's probably gonna look more like this anyway. So this is the one I'm going to go with, and then I'll apply a top coat of varnish after that. As I was applying the stain, I really didn't like the way it looked to be honest, but as it dried out in the sun, it looked much nicer. And it also helped to blend the color of the birch ply to better match the beach. While applying the stain, I'm trying to brush on as little as possible. And if I over apply, I wipe away any excess with a cloth because I don't want it to seep into the grain too much and turn blotchy. While waiting for the stain to dry, I thought I would make some mounts for securing the top to the frame, which will allow the wooden top to expand and contract as necessary. I used some scraps of 24mm birch ply for this and marked up a shape using my speed square. I cut that out at the bandsaw and I made four of these, one for each corner. And here I'm marking up where to drill some holes, which I could do at the pillar drill. I drilled a series of holes to form a slot and then I did some filing. 
and I'll use some of these pan head screws to secure the tops of the frame, which will allow it to move along these slots as the wood expands and contracts. I drilled some holes through the mounts, which I could use to secure them to the frame, and I used some wood glue as well. Finally, I could add a top coat of water-based varnish to the top and the frame. There's a link to the stuff I like to use in the My Tools section in the description box below if you want to check it out. I really like this stuff because it dries perfectly clear without changing the color of the wood and it's really hard wearing and durable. It doesn't look too good as I'm applying it as you can see, but it's just a case of waiting for it to dry and then the color will be far less vibrant. I denibbed between coats of the varnish and I applied two coats in total. And then it has a really nice satin sheen, which again should match the other furniture in the room quite well. And finally I could mount the top onto the frame and the table was pretty heavy by this point. I centered it just by eye and then I could pop the drawer open to give me access to the mounts. Not the best camera angle here as I drill the pilot holes, sorry about that. I added the screws tight enough to hold the top in place, but loose enough to hopefully allow the wood to move. So as I mentioned at the start, this build was for my mum and dad. They mentioned to me a while back, probably over a year ago now, that they wanted a table with a large drawer for storage because my mum does knitting and she wanted somewhere to hide away all of her knitting stuff. I did the SketchUp drawing for this table quite a long time ago, but it's only recently that I've had the right materials on hand to actually make it. It also seemed like a good time to make it because I think they're finding quarantine life quite tough, as I know so many people are, and this was just a small way that I could do something nice for them. I dropped it off at their house a few weeks ago, but obviously adhered to all of the government guidelines, and here's a photo of the table in its final home. So it's not too bad a match to the other furniture in the room, but it's a little bit too dark. But I think it looks pretty good and they are happy with it, so that's all that matters. Originally I wasn't intending to do the whole hidden drawer thing, but when I was looking for drawer runners on Amazon I saw the push-pull ones available and that gave me the idea to do it. And I think it looks nice not having a handle sticking out on the front of it, so that worked out well. This build took me about three days in total, or 22-ish hours. I hope you enjoyed the project. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can via Patreon or PayPal. Links to those below in the description box. And on Patreon, you can get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.